You must know with certainty the name of our maker. <coughs> I do. Bram Stoker. Born 8 November 1847, Dublin. A sickly child who loved his mother. A young man who, like all young men, fell into the crowd. Yes, <coughs> that crowd. That theater crowd. <laughs> And our young Graham entered the theatrical profession in as low and base a manner as one possibly can. As a critic. In 1897, at age 50, Graham Stoker published a book which would in time become his definitive work. In doing so, he made me. And he gave to me a name, Renfield. And he gave me something more. Something that so many of you wish for. Pray for. Beg for. And yet, we'll never attain it. Immortality. I have never forgiven him. Come and 
You are not ill, Lucy. It is I who carry an illness. It eats away me day and night, and its only remedy resides in the very heart which afflicts me. Your heart. May I speak? My dear Lucy, let me say it out loud. I work with lunatics. An amusing statement, yes, a cavalier admission in the eyes of the world, but the world does not see what I see. Each day in ways too intricate to mention, I glimpse the mad souls of men, and from this I have learned the following. We have, all of us, a secret life, and though, though we are loath to divulge it, we do on occasion grant access. We do in rare, rare and remarkable ways allow one person proximity to our hidden self. What, what, what I know of you, Lucy, is terribly dear to me. What I, ne what I will never know of you is dearer still. So please, accept me and be cherished above all women. Bid me stay and be to your final days adored. Oh, that I be struck dumb. That I be swept away to sea and pummeled into driftwood. My sweet, kind-hearted Lucy, I am a brute. I am carrion for vultures and worms. You cannot love me. That is the clear and stinging prognosis, and I must accept it. But, dare I hope, could you learn to love me in time? There is another. <laughs> your heart making way for your hand is previously betrothed. Am I right, dear Lucy? I feared that. <laughs> Two forever gained at the loss of the third. Hear me now. From this moment on, your happiness is my fondest wish. If your heart were free, a man might have hope. But in place of hope, I give you something far stronger and eminently wiser. My friendship. Whatever you need of it shall be yours for the asking. And from you, if I might have a remembrance of some sort, something like your hand mirror which has held your image as vividly as I. That is done then. We have been rebuffed. The world is empty. There is nothing worth doing. Fortunately, there is one way in which lost love can be revenged at the hands of one's work. Redfield! <laughs> How is he? Quite well, sir. On his best behavior. Not a thing out of the ordinary. I told you to keep him to his madness. How can I study him if you allow him to revert to his sanity? Get out of my sight. You've been trying. What? I know, sir. There's life there. The spiders are nearly dumped. I know them. I have them. The world feeds on the carcass of itself. I smell you. Please, please. <sighs> Salt, I think. Salt and perfume. You too have been in the presence of life. For God's sake! <laughs> and life tastes good, doesn't it, Johnny? You've trained the sparrow, I see. Yes, a good bird, that. Why won't she marry you? What are you talking about? I should brood if I were you. I should brood and think of sporadic killings. Why, Renfield? Why the eating of flies and spiders? I have a great love for that. No evasions today. I'm not of a mood. Now again, they are life. And they give life to me. I absorb it through. Blood. I need to blood. And the no- No! You must have a plan of some kind. No! First the flies, then the spiders, and then the sparrow. You have a plan. No! I shall solve you, Redfield. You are a life-eating maniac, and I shall solve the secret of your mind. I am not afraid of the world's rabbit complacency. To question is to discover. Men sneered at vivisection, and yet look at its results today. Why not, therefore, advance science in its most difficult and vital aspect? The brain. For if I held the key to just one lunatic, I might advance my own branch of science. But, no, I must not think too much on this. Seems that only yesterday my life ended with my new hope, and I truly began a new record. <clears throat> Lucy, Lucy, I cannot be angry with you. But now I must only wait, I must wait on hopeless, 
and work, work, work. If only I had as strong a cause as my poor mad friend here, a good, unselfish cause to make me work, that would indeed be happiness. And Miss Lucy would give her hat. Shut up. May I have a kitten? What? A kitten, please, please. A nice little playful kitten that I could play with, teach, and feed, and feed, and feed. No one would refuse me a kitten, would they? How is it that you know her name? Tell me! Ah! Miss Lucy, <laughs> how do you know her name? My master! What? My master told me! <laughs>
Did all this begin? The storm last night, I slept poorly. Had dreams? Yes. Can you tell me? It's very vague. Try, Lucy. <coughs> there was a howling, a dog howling. away from me. My soul seemed to go out of my body and float about in the air. And then...
I'll begin with your blood. My blood? I'll assess its qualities to discover any malady that may reside within. Lucy says now, don't be frightened. Miss Lucy? Yes. May I have your hand? <coughs> there we are. If you'll wrap that, Mina. Yes? You are my true friend. Miss Mina, Miss Mina, a letter has arrived for you. Shall I bring it in? Where is it posted? From a hospital man in Budapest. Oh. I'll be right there. No, Mina, pray for me to save your strength. I'll see you when you will. I thank you, Dr. Seward. Do keep a watchful eye and make sure she doesn't leave this room. Miss Mina, if I may. You are as remarkable as Lucy described. As are you, Dr. Seward. Earlier today, I had the pleasure of meeting your fiancé, Mr. Harker. He seems a fine man. What is it? That's impossible. He's out of the country. Oh, well, perhaps I... But just now, I've had no word in weeks. Why would you say such a thing? Miss Mina. Uh, John. I'm so warm, won't you open the window? days will be well enough to travel. They've given me your things. I couldn't find your briefcase among them. Only this. I wasn't sure whether this... John. You know, we have spoken of trust between husband and wife. That there should be no secrets, no concealment between us. I... Been driven mad. 
But amid this torture, one gift, the loss of memory. I have no idea what happened to bring me here. I have no idea which things were real and which were the insidious dreams of a madman. The secret is here in my journal. Take it, keep it, read it if you must, but never let me know. I do not want to return to those bitter hours, those ghastly days, so my solemn duty bids you do otherwise. Keep this to your heart only. And may this secret Prove the final one between us, so long as we two shall be as one. It's done. Let's go home. walking again, and Miss Mina too will keep your secret. When you wake, you will remember only the cry of a wolf and the sound of the sea. <laughs> Do not 
go past me, Brian. Brian. Who are you talking Please to? Please distribute your glorious savage. Please do not pass me by. You're not late. What? <laughs> and there's one to do another. You keep watch. You maintain an avid readiness. I'm not in the mood for this. But we can wait, can't we, Johnny? There's the men that we are. We can wait for the riches to fill our cup. Do not forget me! We are one man, Johnny. We are those common longing. You await her deep mysteries, as I await my master's gifts. <laughs> I will solve you, Benfield. I shall alert the mad logic of your mind. Now I demand to know, who is your master? You have met the mercy of angels. Don't pursue her. What is it? It's Miss Lucy, sir. She's... The unexpected always happens. You are my friend and master, and you know more about obscure diseases than anyone in the world. You are a philosopher and a metaphysician, and the most advanced scientist of your day. You have an absolutely open mind, an iron nerve, a temper of ice, an indomitable resolution, and the kindliest and truest heart that beats. These things provide you with the equipment for the noble work which you are doing for the good of mankind. I entreat you now, with an all-embracing humility, to come to the aid of my dear, sweet Lucy. To be clear, I am not a slave to flattery. A man's reputation is the most imperfect science of all. I, for one, would love to meet the man whom young Dr. Seward describes. No. What swayed me was the blunt accuracy of his postscript. P.S. Do remember that I once saved your life. <laughs> <laughs> it's as though she's fading away, each day growing more pale, gasping for air. Miss Lucy. Can you hear me? I'm Abraham von Helsing. I've come from Amsterdam at Dr. Seward's request. Now I must ask you a question or two. Would that be all right? Good. Now, have you had a fall lately? Or a fright of some kind? Anything out of the ordinary? Only the dreams. Tell me. Oh, I tried not to sleep. I tried so hard not to fall asleep. But why, Lucy? Just I must have. Because the clock struck twelve and woke me. And there was a scratching, a flapping, something at the window. What could that have been? The wind, I suspect. The rustle of trees. And the dreams. What do you remember of them? has access to this room. Only myself, her mother, and the maid. I shall want to speak to them. Don't ask just yet, but there may be cause. There's always a cause for everything. Here, Miss Lucy, I'd like you to drink this. It's a bit of brandy and a sleeping aid. It will help you rest. Oh, but I don't want to sleep. I'd rather die than ever sleep again. This weakness, it comes to me in my dreams, and I... I am unclean. I feel as if there's no air. No air at all, as Why? if I was in you. Quiet now! We shall keep you safe. Now drink this and rest. I'll be here, Lucy. I shan't leave. What is it? 
She wants blood, my friend. And blood she must have or she will die. Roll up your sleeve, there's no time to waste. <clears throat> I've never seen such instruments. The ghastly paraphernalia of our beneficial trade. Here, swab your arm with this. Professor, she fears her dreams. Her dreams alone cannot render such havoc. I remember nothing from my studies. That remember, ever... John, that knowledge is stronger than memory, and we should not trust the weaker. Lift your arm with degree. Good. Now, the case of our dear miss is one that may be, mind I say may be, of such importance that we may generate new and vital knowledge regarding the canon of catastrophe. Take then good note of it. Nothing is too small. I counsel you put down in record even your doubts and surmises. You speak as though formulating a theory. Be this not love in its purest sense? To transfer from full veins of one to empty veins of another. Now, John, this word of caution. You deal with madmen. All men are mad in some way or the other. And inasmuch as you deal discreetly with your madmen, so too you must deal with God's madmen. And who might they be? The rest of the world. But you and I <coughs> must keep knowledge in its place. We must keep what we learn here and here, and trust only one another with these secrets. You speak as though playing a game. I assure you, John, there's no jest here. Only life and death. And perhaps more. Lucy! She is resting now. Professor Van Helsing has completed a transfusion of blood. Professor, Lucy's dear friend, Miss Mina Murray. Hello. An honor. We've done all we can at the present. But what is the cause? A mystery in want of pursuit. You've just returned from Budapest? Yes. And Mr. Harker, how is he? He's restored, God be thanked. His good humor has returned. His, his terrors have abated. Coming home, it seems, has proved the most soothing medicine. Jonathan, this is a... Jonathan, what is it? It is the man himself. Just now on the street outside, with my own two eyes, I saw, oh my God, it is the man himself. Jonathan, what are you talking it about? It has grown young, the gray hair, the weathered face are gone. Such a change that I thought mine eyes mistaken, but there can be no mistake. It is truly he. Enough if now. Only known, it's over. Your I, home and Wretched safe. fate was a solicitor. Would I have my knife with me then? No, oh, the me mad. Jonathan, no. I have loosed him on England, an ever-widening circle of death have I brought to these shores. I had my chance and I did nothing. My face should not go and pass. Quickly into the next room, your God. The Paris is all beaten. Now forgive me. Ten milligrams. I would relieve your fears, but the web is not fully spun, the shape of our mystery not yet revealed. We shall learn it all too late, I fear. And knowledge is useless to the dead. Not so, Miss Mina. It is, in fact, on account of the dead that I have come. I fear some secret lies here within. Jonathan's trust as well these words remain unread, but I must know what has brought him to this horrid precipice. Will you help me, Professor?
freely and go safely, leaving something of the happiness you bring. Count Dracula? I am Dracula, and I bid you enter, Mr. Harker. Come in. The night air is chill. You must eat, eat and rest. The trip is arduous, but the destination worthwhile. I brought the information you requested regarding the properties in London. Furthermore, Mr. Dawkins, my superior, recommends that you... Oh, Mr. Harker. Yes. You have traveled far. Please allow your host to see to your pleasure before you see to his business. I do hope that you are hungry. I am, actually. I pray you, sit and sup as you please. You will, I trust, forgive me that I do not join you, but I have dined already, and I do not sup. <coughs> please enjoy. A gift from Attila. <laughs> the Huns were despicable, but <laughs> they knew their wine. <laughs> oh, yes, I see. Passed on, I suppose, uh, from an ancient recipe? A gift from an ancient adversary. Won't you join me then? Won't you join me then? Oh. <laughs> My apologies, Mr. Harker, but I must study you. I must learn your ways. How is it? Delicious. Yes. You don't partake? Of wine. Yes. No, <laughs> not of wine. If it be not too bold, may I? Bold, yes. Is that the way of things in England? Bold. I must know all I can of your country. So, you've never been? No. But I have my maps and charts and my books. Many books. And as I read, I imagine. And as I imagine, I hunger. London is a fine city. More to the point, friend. It is a crowded city. <laughs> now I delight in thinking of those bustling streets, peopled with the mad whirl and the rush of humanity. Oh, to be in the midst of that banquet of life. I should, I think, enjoy the country. The open spaces, the riding and hunting. Oh. You hunt, do you? When time allows. And pray, what do you hunt? Bear, elk, the occasional deer. Knife or bow? Both, actually. <laughs> I shall like you, Mr. Harker, for I too enjoy the occasional deer. We are fighters, you see. We Carpathians have bravery and conquest in our veins. <laughs> It is no wonder that when the Turks poured their thousands upon our frontiers, we drove them back. Legion after legion, they came for our lands, and we sentenced them to heaven instead. We are a fierce people, Mr. Harker, with a wealth of victories like the Habsburgs and the Romanovs will never know. You speak with the passion of one who was there? Oh, da Vinci have I known. Charlemagne. Bach. But great men like galaxies end as dust. We Carpathians have come to know that the early days, the warlike times are over. In our world, Mr. Harker, blood is too precious a thing to be spilled. But I have spoken too long. It is near morning and I must retire. I shall leave you then to your rest. One more thing, Mr. Harker. You may go anywhere in the castle you like, except where the doors are locked, which of course you will not wish to go. We are in Transylvania now, and Transylvania is not England. Our ways are not your ways, and there may be to you many strange things. 
but were you to see with my eyes and know with my knowledge, you would better understand. Good morning, then, and good night. Read on. I'm afraid I must be mistaken, Professor. There's nothing here to enlighten us. Miss Mina, I beg you, these notes, this shorthand, it was written for a reason. We must read on. And not time to waste. These are travel notes, business dealings with an aging nobleman. Nothing more. Secrets Jonathan spoke of must be elsewhere. But listen to me. Hidden in the world, in the dark creases of books, in the swirl of ink on innocent pages, hidden there are wild and mysterious things. And if we are to reach into the darkness and bring Jonathan a gleam of peace, we must not be deterred. We must from this moment on be relentless. We must know the order. Now page forward, Miss Mina, I beg of you. Page forward and read on. there. You needn't turn around. I don't wish to disturb you. Only to study you. To learn the curve of your leg. I shall be leaving in the morning. I have not intended to stay a full week, and since our business here is nearly complete, I shall be... Who is this beautiful creature? That is my betrothed. Mina Murray. She reminds me of. She's quite beautiful. Mr. Harker, you've cut yourself. So I have. Please, allow me. children of the night, what beautiful music they make. Oh, you must take care, Mr. Harker. Take care how you cut yourself. It is more dangerous than you think in this country. Where are my papers? Answer me, please. All my papers are gone. Everything, notes, letters, even the deed to the property itself, as yet unsigned, gone. You've been blessed with a disappearance. How fortunate. But this journal, how did it survive? The shorthand. He knew not its contents. And my clothes? All but what I have on now are missing. I shall find you a nice cape. Now, tell me of my new home. Told you for a week. Tell me again. I must be certain. Is it an old place? Yes. As I told you each night. Oh, it's only... I'm so glad, for you see, I am old, Mr. Harker. Old in days which few can rival or understand. And to live in a new house would kill me. Do tell me the name again. Splendid. Wait. 
Go back. We must know. The name and the location, we must know it. It's not here. Let me see that. There's nothing here. The page is burned away. Burned away in two places. How can that be? And as for night, tell me, is it well appointed? No. In fact, it's quite shrouded in darkness. I commend you, Mr. Harker, for I love the shade and the shadow, the solitude and potent quiet of the night. But there is no quiet here. There, only this digging. I am forever hearing the sound of shovels digging, doors being opened and shut. Only the gypsies below doing my bidding. And the boxes, large boxes being hauled out the last three days and nights. What is the meaning of that? That work is entrusted to another solicitor, my friend. I beg you not to press me any. I must go to England. I am starving here for want of companionship, for want of life. Here is the deed. It lacks only your signature. How did you? Come, my friend. Finish what you have begun. Your work shall be rewarded tenfold. I want to leave. Very well. I want to leave tonight. I'm afraid that is impossible. Why? My coachman and horses are away. I walk alone amongst the wolves. I hazard a chance. Now please point me towards the door. Oh, Mr. Hart, I will point you towards all of the doors. Wait. No. Sorry.
say is God at all times. Yes, and there's no other access to this room. None whatsoever. This room was built for dignitaries who, on occasion, would visit the asylum to show they were friends of the less fortunate. Most of them quickly found they could not stomach the inmates and safely lock themselves away in here. What is it? Yes, I'll have the staff be more thorough. See to the day our strangers enter. Then I assure you they won't. Assurance is not enough, John. They must be vigilant. They must be rigorously on guard, easy on both. Pay special attention to the doors and windows. Professor, I'm afraid I don't understand. It was necessary to move Lucy from her home to a safer room. You have provided that here at the asylum. But safe from what? Do not fear, John, to think the most unprobable. And as you think it, remember our promise to one another to not enlighten and thus not alarm the others. There is misery enough among them. But what effect will garlic have on her loss of blood? Perhaps none. <laughs> you have been of great help to her, John. And in no less than blood, she is your bride. No man knows till he experiences it, what it is to feel his own life drawn away into the, the veins of the woman he adores. Further, I trust in your inspection you encountered the marks upon Miss Lucy's neck? Yes, I did. And you mean to tell me you have no suspicion as to what is killing your dear Lucy? A nervous prostration following on great loss of blood. And how was the blood lost? John, it is the fault of our science that it wants to explain everything. When it fails, then it says there is nothing to explain. But if her blood, great quantities of her blood, was lost through a wound in her neck, where did it go? It was not on her clothing, her bedding. It was nowhere to be seen. If it happened as you say, what took it out? A package has arrived for you, Professor. Splendid. You will place it on the bed. And Miss Lucy? She's on her way. I'll see her off. Excuse me. Oh, Miss Nina, how can I say what I owe to you? Mr. Harker's journal was as sunshine to me. It opened a gate shrouded in superstition and disregard, and it dazzled me with insight. Yes, I can. If ever Abraham Van Helsing can do anything for you or yours, if ever I may serve you as a friend, I trust you will let me know. There are darknesses in this life. And there are lights. And you miss me now, I want the lights. There is something. Please. Lucy has told you of her dreams. But I fear they are not dreams. What do you mean? Many nights I would wake to find her gone, walking in her sleep toward the cliffs. Many nights I, I would find her and bring her home. And then she began to grow ill. Professor, I have pledged you my confidence, so I must oh, ask you not to... Your words have my trust. Now you found her at the cliffs. Was she alone? Yes. Each time but one. Once there was a man. The shadow of a man. All in black, his face in shadow. I thought nothing of it till reading Jonathan's journal. The man he described him, and what he wrote of the Count's plans to come to London. I know not what this means, but there seems to be some thread of continuity, some... No. No, it is too strange. The laugh who could be foolish. Miss Mina, I have learned not to belittle on anyone's beliefs, no matter how strange. For it is not the ordinary things which close our minds, but the extraordinary things, those mysteries on the fringe of our being. This then my request. I want to know what you know. I want to be informed of what you learn as you learn. Why, it is true that Mr. Harker's suffering falls within the range promise of my experience. Your is your promise a worthy one or not? Here we are. <coughs> Professor. John, it's just as you, you have my word. Oh, but you mentioned nothing of the smell, my God. A medicinal contrivance. <laughs> <laughs> nothing more. One of us will stay here with you at all times to keep watch and assure your safety. This, Miss Lucy, is for you. Such flattery to be unwell received. <laughs> oh, Professor, <laughs> what a lovely <laughs> <you> breathe. Oh, <clears throat> I shall hang it. <laughs> 
it's to be worn. Worn? Yeah, like this. Oh, oh Professor, <laughs> going look around the windows is one thing, but I'm afraid it's I can't. It's a guard against your bad dreams, Miss but Lucy. But it's calm and garlic. I fear you're having a joke on me. I warn you, do not thwart me in this. There's no jest in what I do. Only grim purpose. Take care to mind me, if not for your own sake, then for that of the others. We'll do what you ask, but I, I must say it puzzles me. <laughs> For a stranger to walk in right now, they think you were working a spell to keep out an evil spirit. Maybe I am. <laughs> Dr. Seward! What is it? It's Renfield. You must come. John! I come with you. This madman may serve as an index to our investigation. In what way? Have not his outbursts coincided. Lucy's bad dreams. We leave you in the best of hands. Professor, what is What's happening to me? You mustn't think of it. You need only rest. Mila, you must promise me something. Anything at all. Promise me you'll forgive me. Lucy, don't be silly. Forgive you for what? Something I know not of. But there are dark imaginings in me. I have fought to rid my mind of them, but they rise up within me, bringing color to my cheeks and a sickly taste to my mouth. God help me, Mina. I don't know what I've become. Oh, and do let me recount how she came into the such joie de vie, such an easy gracefulness, which is rarely respected in any movement. The reason is this is the one quality that people respect the most. All right, but from master, pray, what news? What is, where did this chair come from? From a mosey and I see. From the one poor master. <laughs> where did you find him? Redfield, <laughs> listen to me. And the girl, John. Oh, no wonder your heart broken. She came by to the assumed name. Dashing. We talked. I spoke of my fondness for Mozart. But she bested me with her treatise on Bach. What? Miss Lucy has been upstairs all day. She's a very clever girl. She called herself Mina, claimed to be lost. But then we're all lost in here, aren't we? I do hope she found her way. You're speaking of Miss Mina, then. And what you will, right, Johnny? Any bride will do. I will not talk! Match not madness with wits. So what does it place? A voice like water. Could you point me to the guest room? I seem to have taken a wrong turn. <laughs> I quote her a sonnet and sent her on her way. A lovely creature. She shall be missed. Missed? Do say more. In what way will she be missed? I entreat you, Dr. Seward, to let me out of this madhouse. Send me away from here. Anywhere you will, or I'll be forced to do something terrible. I'm in great danger, sir! You're in no danger at all. You're perfectly safe here. I'm speaking from the depth of my soul. I beg you, you don't know what you do by keeping me here. You don't know whom you shall harm. And I, bound to secrecy, cannot tell you. You will stay here until the court deems you fit. In these wild harangues in no way further your wish to be considered sane. Send me where you will! Bind me, beat me, drag me away, do whatever you must, but take me from here and save my soul from guilt. Call yourself what and explain. What guilt do you speak of? Oh, hear me, by all you hold sacred, by all you hold dear, by all that is lost, by all that is still lit, for the sake of the dear God Almighty. It's enough now. Get him out, John. Don't you see, John, you're in cure. I am no lunatic in a mad fit, but a sane man fighting for his soul. You'll go nowhere. <laughs> hear me now! Ah! And now? What is your thesis now? My thesis is this. I want 
want you to believe. To believe what? To believe in things which you cannot. That is the essence of faith. To accept the things which cannot be proved. With all due respect, my patience with your cryptic homilies is coming to an end. Can you tell me why men in all ages and all places have believed that there are some few who live on always? That there are men and women who cannot die? I did what I could to warn you. Remember that. and send him here. Tell him that they are gone. The marks on the neck, they have disappeared. She is healed. Quickly now, go! Lucy? 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 Wake up. Wake up, Lucy. Lucy, wake up. Oh my God. Lucy. Oh, please, God. No! No! Oh God, no! Let me show you my true heart. That's it. 
That's it. Oh. I've wanted this for so long. You were right, you know. We do, all of us, have a secret life. And I want you to know mine. So please, Johnny, close your eyes. This is only the beginning. We must arrange for the entombment as soon as possible, and then we must wait. Wait for what? There are strange and terrible days ahead of us. I entreat you now have faith in me. And if it be in your heart, pity me. For what reason? It is I who have lost the light of my life. Pity me because I know why. But you tell us nothing! You test the limits of my sympathetic understanding. Facts of your journal, you are in no danger. And nor is this me. This room, in fact, all of the asylum may remain safe, so long as no stranger is granted permission to enter. You were right, Mr. Harker. The Count is somewhere in London. We shall find his whereabouts through you. The name of the property, though, remains lost to me. As he burned it from your journal, so do he burned it from your mind. I will find it, Professor. I am in your debt. You show me that I did see what I imagined, and for that cure I am ever at your service. Let us be friends for all our lives. Now there's a bit of water we must pass through, John, before we arrive at the sweep. Enough! Either tell me your plan or leave us in peace. <coughs> I prove being spoken to as though I were a child. You're a grown man, is that right? That's right. And no longer my student. That's right. And the man who once saved my life? Yes. Well, John, our accounts are settled. What does that mean? I have just saved yours. She is the undead. The restless, bloodletting vampire. She has been cursed with immortality and must go on, age after age, preying upon the lifeblood of humanity and multiplying the evils of the world in an ever-widening circle of malevolent destruction. Your start. Scourge of Christendom, the Lords of Lucifer. Professor, have you gone mad? I know that I had. Madness would be easy to bear compared with a truth such as this. Why do you think I have taken such time, such care, to tell you? Knowing of your love for her, I wished to be gentle. But it is no longer your heart which is at risk, John, but your heart's in mission. If this wild account be so, then we are too late. Is that right? She is already lost. Lost but for our daring. Following her burial, we shall go to her tomb, this in secret, to protect her good name and to bring no more of a kind down upon us. And once there, we shall drive a stake through her heart and sever her head from her body. Yes, <laughs> what have I done that you would torture me so? I will never consent to that. I will not have a too young grave dishonored in such a way. It is unthinkable you- no, John, I will show you the unthinkable. If you dare join me at the tomb the night of her burial, I will convince you of my plan. Thank 
Lucy must be attended to, and the whereabouts of the Count must be discovered. Attended to? What can that mean? Lucy's been entombed for days. Not two hours ago, we said our final prayers over her. <coughs> Please, what is it? You must trust in my silence, Mina. You must stay here where it is safe.
daily cause. The sun rises on no life as miserable as mine. He has betrayed me. And mark these words. Right now, turn to the person next to you and borrow a pencil. Or I shall not say this again. One should rather die than be betrayed. There is no deceit in death. It delivers precisely what it has promised. Betrayal, though. Betrayal is the willful slaughter of hope. It shall not sit. Now it is time. Now that the sun is about to rise, let us look within. Never have I endured a more woeful night waiting in this graveyard for hours. And for what reason? John, help us here, and may your eyes see what your heart refuses. My God, it is as I feared. What have you done with her? In this very crypt I saw her laid and... You're behind this, and I have all people. Do not recognize madness when it stands before John, me. listen to me. With what malice do you lure the living to your purpose? And what ghastly plans do you inflict upon the dead? What have you done with her? Just to recall yourself. You require more proof, but you shall have it. Little boy, little boy, come and see me. Who's there? Hide now. Back away and observe. I'm a friend of the children. I'm the Bufa lady. Won't you come out and play? That would make the Bufa lady happy. Hi there, Johnny. Lucy? Let me have act. The sun is about to rise, there's none. Come to Lucy. My arms are so hungry for you. Be my husband, Johnny. Come to me and let me be yours. That's not her, John. That's not the Lucy you know. Who knows you better, Johnny? Who's loved you all these years? Deception. Nothing more, and it shall not work. I know your thoughts, Jack. John, the sun will be up and it will be safe. You still want me, Johnny. I know it. It's not your beauty that is gone. It is your soul. No! 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 It is your soul that I love!
look on her face. She's changed back. No longer the devil's concubine. She is the Lucy we loved. Her sweetness and purity restored. John, if you will, kiss her now as she asked. And may this kiss send her to heaven. <laughs> Mr. Harker and I will finish up here. Her mouth must be filled with garlic and then her head severed. <laughs> One step of our work would then be done. <coughs> what remains is the greater task to locate the author of these our sorrows and rid him from the world. Professor. Yes. As Miss Lisa screamed for the final time, I felt the Bible grow warm in my hands. This is the power of the Lord. This further, a word has been burnt into the cover. Carfax. The Count's destination and estate here in London. Are you certain? Yes, I am. Miss Lucy's final gift to us. John, do you know of this estate? John, what is it? Had we known, we might have saved Lucy. John, I don't understand. Carfax. It adjoins the asylum. He has been all this time in our midst. Nina. As the days passed, I alone began to suspect the change in her, the skin growing more pale, the distant, listless gaze. In our efforts to protect Miss Mina, we had to literally, I am afraid, kept her in the dark. The deeper part of his secret is that she herself seemed unaware, a stranger to her own transformation. making my point. And if you feel I talk about my station, let the magnitude of circumstance be my apology. This darkness, this silence between us must come to an end. 
We must work together with absolute trust. And that, and that may be stronger as a group when we are alone. I have these three nights. I slept fitfully. I've heard noises in the dark. I've been plagued by disturbing dreams. We've been in search of the count. So too I fear. Oh my God. I have no memory of it. Marks are clear. Now, you must tell me, is this how Lucy died? Just some maladventure involving the count. Keep this from me no longer. Professor. everywhere that men have ever been. The Nosferatu of the strength of twenty men, and the ancient ones like our Count Dracula come armed with the cunning of the ages. He can transform himself into wolf or bat, mist or fog, any form of nature which suits him. He throws no shadow, can be seen in no mirror, and for sustenance one thing only, the blood of the living. When his special pabulum is plenty, he grows younger, his faculties stronger, his ghastly powers more vital by the hour. To those fitting, his hunger brings death. Death of goodness, yes, but life eternal amidst the damned. Those bitten repeatedly, as I pray to our Lord, you have not been, become the very thing which afflicted them, the disciples of the night. How could such a change befall Mina? She is pure of heart. She so too, I am afraid, was the Count. In life, he was a man of the utmost virtue. I have studied him for many years. The terror of it is, my friend, this evil rose, richest in a soul most pure. You assured me she was safe here, Professor. You gave me your His word. His power to this point has bested our Waste knowledge. Waste no more of our time, I beg you. Tell us directly, is there no way to defeat this monster? Oh, there is a way, Mr. Harker. Dracula can do all of these many things. But he is not free. He is shackled to the laws of the night. His power ceases, as does that of all evil things, with the coming of the day. Certain objects hold a telling power over him. The garlic you know of, the holy cross of our Lord, the bread of holy communion, and the branch of the wild rose, which, when placed upon his coffin, serves to lock him fast within. He cannot at first enter any place unless someone who dwell there first bid him enter. Meaning someone let him at Lucy and at Mina. And most to the moment. He must each day sleep in his native soil or he will die. The digging. Exactly. That is what you heard at his castle. Boxes of Transylvanian soil being filled. Boxes which are here now in London. The ship's log notes the Count's cargo is 50 boxes. And just today in Carfax, Professor and I discovered 48 of them. I sanctified the soil of each, making them of no use to the Count. When we find the remaining two boxes, we shall find the man himself. Finally, these words above all others. If we in this room fail, our fate is not one of mere life or death. It is that we become as him. Foul things of the night, without heart, without conscience, preying upon the quivering bodies of those we love best. If we fail, to us forever are the gates of heaven shut. Look now to your own hearts and answer. Are we to cower in the face of such adversity? Or are we, as Miss Mina has so bravely said, to rise up and hunt this wretch to his true death? Steadfast belief in science, a fierce reliance on faith, and 
the abbot hopes that there exists in us light enough to dispel the darkness. We pledge our whole selves. Amen. We have sealed now either the end of ourselves or the death knell of the Count. Now to our plan. The remaining boxes must be found in a pot of fight. She's no stranger. Nothing. Quickly, move her to the bed. She has lost more blood than we imagined. John, make him ready. I shall need it his veins. Professor Van Helsing, keep faith now. You are giving her the blood which she has stolen. He's gone, sir. He's escaped. Who? Renfield. He's left the asylum. Did he mention his master? Did he use that word? No. Yes, he did. He will lead us to the Count. Professor, come. John, I cannot leave here until the transfusion is complete. You are the only one who knows his mind. You are the only one who can confront him. Go, Professor, before it's too late. I can't yes, leave. Oh, come, come, Professor, with haste. You must go. <laughs> all day and all night do I wait. But nothing promises bloody creatures teeming with life. But nothing. Not even an easy little blowfly. Nothing! Dr. Seward, come quickly. I was to be yours, master. I was to serve you through the ages. I tried to warn them. I tried, but they don't listen. He's nothing but a wanton sailor with a king. He'll keep his promises to her. She will get her life. She will get her blood. Because she is beautiful. Because she pleases him. Because he can screw her with his teeth. Professor, someone in here, please, come quickly. What of the rest of us? What of the great unbeautiful multitude? What of us born hideous? Bless it only with honest devotion. It is we who love you. What truly more deeply than she?
One could, it seems, return again and again, and never get one spirit. Stay away from her. Mr. Harker, please. You know how I prize divinity. One more word, and I shall have to return your acquaintance. Let it be. Let it be yours. And thank you for the use of your knife. It suits my purpose. When I but whisper, come to me. You will travel the ages to do my bidding. You will cross oceans of time. <laughs> my God! Our theories prove the fact! What have you done to them? I have done all that I can. I have given rest to one, food to another, and heaven to another. Let her go! The soil of your homeland has been sanctified by God. Box after box after box. No! Your coffin home has been destroyed. You shall yet be sorry. Each and every one of you. My revenge has just begun. No matter of time, eternity shall come for me. Your time is drawing near. A century shall be my home. Truly my soul waited upon God. From him comes Don't mock me with your foolish prayers. It's insult to cast him down the delight in life. Faith is nature, love is my shackle. It's in God is my son. It's not in your throat. Safe now. He's gone. Now, God help her. His blood. Is this his handiwork? Answer me. Jonathan, stay with me. Camina. All these years, all I wanted was access to the soul of a madman. <coughs> and I had only but known. I'm into this misery. Have we not learned something? Notwithstanding his powers, he fears us. How can you say that? He fears time. He fears want. 
If not, why his hurried escape? The heart of our plan, the destruction of his ancient soil is sound. I found and sanctified the soil of another box, which counts as 49. There's still one left. And that I propose is for <coughs> To where? To where else? His home. The soil he must have to survive. Jonathan. Jonathan. Please. You must never touch me or kiss me again. Transylvania, to the lair of the Count. <coughs> Look, deep inside your mind, what is there? Or the Orient Express. I had the men write their wills before we left. This is no idle precaution. And now, the same? Yes. Darkness close at hand. A musty smell around me. The counting is common. It is working. Beyond. The sound of waves. Still pounding. Pounding. The hypnosis reveals the count traveling by boat. So we proceed overland by train to reach Varna before he does. Days later, and still the same. No. There is a change. The waves have stopped. Now footsteps. Voices. He has reached the port, and we are here at Varna waiting for him. Where is he? Searching the ship high and low? Nothing. But he has tricked us. He has sailed to a different port. That is the risk of the hypnosis, friends. It may work both ways. He may know our thoughts through Miss Mina. Water again. But not crashing. Softer sound. He's traveling by river. Yes. Yes, a river. That's it. That's the sound. Sir, if I know it from my travels, it runs round the Gorgo Pass. And to the castle. I'll procure a ship and follow him on the water. Yes, and take Mr. Harker with you. And what of Mina? I shall take her to the castle. Have you gone mad? She alone can lead us. She alone will take us to the heart of his crypt. Once there, we shall affect his demise. So the world will I let you do this, not by heaven or by hell. Say no more. She is our greatest weapon in this. Do you know what that place is? Think of you both. Say no more. Have you been inside that hellish den where grisly shapes have heard every speck of dust? Answer me, Professor. Mr. Harker. You have not felt his hungry lips upon your throat. I take her there to save her. Please. He's listening even now. Through me, he knows your every word. Well, Mr. Harker, on your own soul does this lie. We are on the river now, Mr. Harker and I, following the count in his ship. And I, the professor, my way into the castle. Miss Mina's internal struggle is unmistakable. Sunrise, this weakness, the sunset, this strength, this 
Malinga. I can see the vampire taking hold within her. My mouth so dry. My gums soft and the flaws of my teeth coming alive in my mouth. May God make us ministers of this monster's destruction. Changes are here that my body welcomes. My mind most fears. And now, the Count's boat heading for shore, docking. The castle now in sight. There is the box, the wooden box, being placed on a wagon hitched to a team. The castle reached, and in the distance, a wagon approaching. A wagon with no driver at its head. We give chase, the last light of day fading. We must take him in his coffin before the light is gone. We are, we are riding in a fury, racing the sunset. The castle door, his carriage stops. His wagon pulls away, and there, there before us, the object of our chase. Quickly, the sun is nearly gone. What have you done with her? Let us settle first with the Count. Oh, the Count is to help me. Help me. The man himself. Hurry now. This sacred circle shall keep him at bay should he escape the coffin. He cannot pass over the holy bread. <coughs> the stake. Quickly. The sun is gone. Now, Mr. Harker. Gone.